In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve quadratic inequalities using the graphical method. So here we want to find the solution of this inequality, x squared is greater than 9. The way we do this using the graphical method is we rearrange the inequality a bit so that the right hand side is 0. So let's, let's do that first. So starting off with x squared is greater than 9, we're going to rearrange the inequality so that this right hand side is 0. Right now it's 9 and we want to make that 0. So in order to do that, let's subtract 9 from both sides. And the result then will just be x squared minus 9 on this side is greater than 9 minus 9, which cancels out to give us 0. OK, so x squared minus 9 is greater than 0. And now this x squared minus 9 part, we can think about as, um, as a graph. Let's graph x squared minus 9. Um, we know the graph of x squared is like um, it goes up like this, a parabola, and the minus 9 is just shifting it down a bit. So we're starting here, and it goes something like this. All right, so let's, let's leave that. That is, that is y equals x squared minus 9. And on this graph, we are interested in the parts where y is greater than 0. Um, so we want to find where is y positive in this parabola. And looking at the graph, we can see two areas where y is positive. First of all, um, on the left-hand side, y is positive all up here until it hits that first root there, until it crosses the x-axis. So, so we're interested in the x values that give us the positive y over here. So, so let's let's uh, put an open circle around that root um, because. Uh, if it's if it's equal to zero, then zero is zero is not greater than zero. Um, so we want we want everything to the left of it, but not including the root. So all of the x values to the left of there. Okay, and then so now once we once we pass up that root and we're we're down here, these uh, these x values in between the two roots correspond to negative y values, and that's not what we want. We want y values that are greater than zero. So we can forget about these. And now, um, now once we hit this second root on this side, um, that's when the y flips back to being greater than 0. So we want the x values, which give us these y's that are greater than 0. But again, open circle, because uh, we don't want the x value, which gives us a y value of 0, because 0 is not greater than 0. We want everything to the right of that root. OK. So, so we know our solution is going to be of the form um, x is less than our first root. Let's just uh, put that in a, in a box right here. And then, um, so or x is greater than the second root. So let's put that in a box also. Um, so, so this first root is going to go there, and the second root is going to go there, but we don't actually know what the roots are yet. That's what we need to figure out. The way that we can figure this out is by just setting the function equal to zero. So we'll say that x squared minus 9 is equal to zero, and we just need to solve that. So easiest way to solve that is probably just moving this 9 back to the other side. So plus 9 plus 9 cancels out the negative 9 and we just have x squared equals 9 and then taking the square root of both sides. So we've got that x is just equal to um, plus or minus square root of 9. Okay, so, so x is equal to plus or minus 3 and, and that tells us our that tells us our um, our roots here. So this root is the negative root, that root is negative three, and then this root here is the positive root, so positive three. And great, so we just plug that into the inequality template that we set up, x is less than negative three, or x is greater than positive three. And there we go, that is our result. Here's another example, and the only difference in this example is that we have a trickier quadratic inequality. So we want to find the solution of x squared plus 3x plus 1 is less than or equal to 4x plus 1. Oh, and another difference is there's also equality allowed too, um, so we'll just keep that in mind. 
but the first step is still the same. We want to manipulate this inequality to get the right hand side equal to zero. Um, so let's do that. So let's start off with x squared plus 3x plus 1 is less than or equal to 4x plus 1. And let's go ahead and eliminate both of these terms on the right hand side. So first to eliminate the 4x, we have to subtract 4x. So we'll do that. And also to eliminate the 1, we have to subtract 1. So we'll do that as well. So go ahead and do that. Um, so we've got x squared and then 3x minus 4x just makes um, minus 1x or just minus x. And now the 1 minus 1, that cancels. Um, then less than or equal to 4x minus 4x cancels. 1 minus 1 cancels. Great. So we've simplified this a lot. We have x squared minus x is less than or equal to 0. And that is equivalent to the original inequality. But now we can interpret this left hand side as a parabola and we can think about where is this where are the y values of this parabola um, less than or equal to zero so let's go ahead and draw a rough sketch of this parabola we know it opens up because it has a positive x squared term um, so it opens up and somewhere it dips below the x-axis and we're not really sure where just yet um, so but we know that it's above the x-axis on its two ends here and below the x-axis in the middle here. Now let's, let's label this graph. That's just y equals x squared minus x. And let's look back to our inequality to see what we are interested in. We're interested in the spots where y is less than or equal to zero. We want um, where, the, where the parabola is at or below the x-axis. So let's see what regions we're interested in. So going from left to right, on the, on the left here, it's above the y-axis, and that's not what we want. We don't want greater than zero. We want less than or equal to zero. So we're ignoring all the x values that give us these y values until we hit this root right here. At the root right here, the y value is equal to zero, and that is something that we're interested in, because zero is less than or equal to zero, because equality is allowed. So, so close circle here because equality is allowed. And then everything underneath here has negative y values. And um, that's good, that's what we want. We want all the y values that are less than or equal to zero. Um, so continue, continue here. Uh, we want all these x values here. And now how about when we hit the next root here? The next root, um, the y value is zero. And that is what we want. We want well, zero is less than or equal to zero, um, so that's good. But once we pass up that root, then y is positive again, and that's no longer what we want, because uh, we want y to be to be zero or negative. Okay, so we're we're interested in the x values between these two roots. So let's write that down as x is um, greater than or equal to the left root, um, or equal to because it's a a closed circle and x is less than or equal to the right root again closed circle so now it just remains to figure out um, what the what the roots are once we figure out those what those are we can just plug them into our inequality template and we'll be done so how do we figure out what these roots are well again we just go ahead and set our expression equal to zero so x squared minus x has to be equal to zero and then we just solve that and this one's a pretty straightforward one to solve. We can just factor this one really easily. Just factor out an x from both terms. So x times x minus one has to be equal to zero. So now we set each factor equal to zero. We have x equals zero and x minus one equals zero. Um, this is already solved. And this one just add one to both sides. And then that cancels out the negative one and you get x equals one. Okay, so zero and one are our roots and zero is the one on the left because that's smaller. One is the one on the right because that's bigger. So then we can just plug that into our template that we set up earlier. X is greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to one. And then we're done. That's our solution. Okay, last example. And this one's pretty similar to the ones we've done 
previously. Again, we just want to um, we want to get the right hand side equal to zero, and we can do that by manipulating our inequality. So we'll write it down here: nine x plus six is less than two x squared plus one. And let's go ahead and subtract the off these terms on the right side. So so minus two x squared on both sides and then minus one on both sides. Okay, so let's do that. So, so we've just got a minus two x squared on this side, minus two x squared, and then plus a nine x, and then six minus one makes five, and, um, and then that is less than, uh, on this side, all these things cancel out, goes to zero. Okay, so let's go ahead and sketch a graph of y equals this expression on the left hand side. Um, now this has a negative leading coefficient on the x squared term, so that's a downward parabola. Um, we don't know exactly where it hits the x axis yet, but we know that it's downward, so it's gonna look something like, like this. Okay, so let's do that, and we'll label it with y equals negative two x squared plus nine x plus five. Okay. So now what are the x values that we're interested in? We're interested in the x values for which the function output is less than zero. So we want the function outputs that are, are less than zero and proceeding from left to right and left where we start. Um, yeah, we're, we're less than zero over here all the way up until the first root here. Okay, so we're interested in everything that is left of the first root. And do we include the first root? Um, well, well, we have we have just less than zero. So at the, at the first root, the y value is equal to zero and zero is not less than zero. So no, don't include the first root. Open circle around that. And we just want everything to the left. Okay, so now as we go past the first root, now y is positive all throughout here. And that's not what we're interested in. We want y is less than zero. Um, so nope, we're not interested, not interested. But now um, once it crosses the second root, we start to become interested again, because now the function, um, the output is indeed less than zero. So we want everything to the right of here. And again, we don't want to include that root itself because um, the y value at that root is zero and zero is not less than zero. Okay, so we're interested in all the x that are less than the first root and uh, or, or all the x that are greater than the second root. And again, we're just gonna have to solve for what the roots are and then plug them in here. So let's go ahead and do that. So we've gotta set this function uh, equal to zero. We've gotta set negative two x squared plus nine x plus five equals zero. And we gotta solve that. Okay, now this is, um, this is a difficult one. Uh, it doesn't look like it's easily factored. Um, I think we're gonna have to pull out the quadratic equation. Yeah, let's do that. Let's just get it over and done with. All right, so x x is equal to um, negative b to start with, so, so negative nine plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four ac. b again is nine, so b squared is 81. Uh, well, let's just write nine squared for now. Simplify in the next step. Nine squared minus four times a. A is negative two, and then c is five. Okay, and that's all over two a. So two times negative two. And what does that simplify to? Um, so x is equal to negative nine plus or minus the square root of nine squared is 81, and then um, minus minus um, four times negative two times five, four times negative two is negative eight, then times five is negative 40. So minus negative 40, and that's all over uh, two times negative two is negative four. Okay, so x equals negative nine plus or minus square root of 81 minus negative 40 is like 81 plus 40. So square root of 121 over negative four. So x equals um, negative nine plus or minus, well root 121 is 
just 11. So negative nine plus or minus 11 over negative four. Okay, cool, so this simplifies pretty nicely. So, so we've got x equals negative nine. First of all, there's minus 11 over negative four and um, x equals negative nine plus 11 over negative four. So dealing with the minus 11 first, we've got x equals um, negative nine minus 11 is negative 20 over negative four. So this is equal to, um, that's just five. So negatives cancel, 20 divided by four is five. Uh, let's circle that so we see it. Um, and then the other one, x equals negative nine plus 11 over negative four. Negative nine plus 11 is just two. Then two over negative four, that's equal to, pull out the negative sign and then two over four is just a half. So that's the other one. Okay, so this, this root right here is the smaller one. So this one is negative a half. And then this root over here is the bigger one. So that one is five. And then, okay, so we can just put that into our template that we made. X is less than negative a half or X is greater than five. And there we go. That is our solution. Now we know how to solve quadratic inequalities using the graph for insight. Um, in the future though, we'll also see a way to solve quadratic inequalities without any graphing through the use of sign tables instead.